Okay, so make these two folders in your Lightwave directory. Command, we'll deal with command later. Config is where Lightwave will store all of its config files. Now, by default, Lightwave will store its config files in some other esoteric location, like C, Documents and Settings, User, or whatever. But uh, when you're doing ScreamerNet stuff, network stuff, you need to uh, put it in a more mobile location. Okay, the next thing you need to do is to run Lightwave and when you do this you tell it to use your new config directory. Let's go into my computer here, Lightwave, Programs, okay. Lightwave and Modeler, there's Modeler, these two need to have shortcuts made. You right click on it, you go create shortcut. And then when you do create the shortcut you can drag it to your desktop or you can uh, you can you can drag it into here. I have it up here. Let's look at this icon. Properties. Okay. Target. You can see that I have it looking for Lightwave inside of the network drive. X. I'm not going into C program files, yada yada yada. Um, I'm going to X programs. Let me mirror this over here. Programs. So that's where Lightwave is. Lightwave.exe. Okay, then after you do that, you hit a space, and here's the minus key, C and then another location x colon slash config and that's that configure directory we created. So this bit right here, this little operator we add to the dash C, tells it the config file is going to be specified in our icon when we run it. We're basically telling it to use a config file in a different location from default. And uh, this this dash zero, this is optional. I run this without the hub. That's what the dash zero does. And uh, you can, I think you can put start the start in location if you want to. I don't know. If, uh, you might be able to just leave that blank. Same thing here. Same thing for modeler. This is the location in your network drive. Space dash C. There's nothing between the C and, and the and then the the specified location of your config directory. And of course dash zero if you want to turn off the hub. So with that out of the way, we are now ready to move on to the next step. Once you have this set up with your icons, you will run Lightwave. And then you will close Lightwave. And that what that will do is it will recreate config files in your newly created config directory. So when you go in here it will look something like this. A bunch of stuff in well you won't have there's a couple of these files that belong to plugins, bandsaw, whoops. But uh, the important thing to do in here, and this is going to be very tedious, is to go in all of these files I'm going to say open with WordPad. Okay, so we don't need to change anything in here. Open with WordPad. Nothing to change here. This one is definitely going to need some changes. All right. Now, actually, I don't need to change anything because mine's already set up but you may need to change it. Basically, you gotta make sure that all locations are using your network drives. Okay, so in this case these are some 
some locations in my projects directory, but other times there will be locations in your uh, your LightWave directory. Best way to do that is to go in here and go find, and you would type in a slash and go find next. Let me shrink this down so we can see that. There. It will go through and highlight any time there is a location. You might even want to go like this, colon and then backslash. And it will go like that. And you can actually do a search and replace and bulk change them because there's going to be a lot of them. So uh, in your case, it may it may say C colon something something. And you'll need to change that to whatever your directory letter you cha you have, and just go through. There's going to be a bunch of them. Uh, next one. Okay, see here on this one, it's a little funkier. You can see it's got two backslashes, and all of these are all like double backslashed. I don't know why they do it, but you need to keep doing it that way. The only important thing is to change this to make sure these are one of your network drives. So basically we're removing all references to your physical locations and changing everything to your network locations. And the reason why we're doing this, of course, is when you are running ScreenRunet on multiple computers, any computer on your network be needs to be able to find these folders, these directories, on your network. You cannot just say C colon yada 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 because on another computer it's going to look in C and it's not going to find it because it's in C on your other computer. But if you are using a network drive here, then it will be able to find it because uh, the way we, of the way we set it up on the other computers. We'll get to that later. Keep in mind when you're doing your searches and replaces that you will need to remove one or two layers of your, your directory structure. In other words, if you have a location saying C slash program files slash lightwave, when you change that to your directory, your network directory name, it's not going to have the program files because it's going to go right to where lightwave is. So uh, watch out for that. Okay, so let's say we went through all these and, and changed them all around. And uh, I think by this point we're pretty much set up. Now, <sighs> this is complicated stuff, I know. The next thing you need to do, if you have multiple computers, is to buy some things. You will need a switcher. Uh, they all look slightly different, but basically they all got the different Ethernet ports there. Uh, I have an 8-port switcher. They're fairly inexpensive. I think you can get them for around 40 bucks. And you also need Cat5e cables. Uh, you don't want just a Cat5, you want Cat5e. Uh, you can actually get Cat6 if you want to, but they're more expensive and it's, it's for huge amounts of bandwidth that frankly you're not going to need. So Cat5e is sufficient, but you can get Cat6 if you want to. Back to that switcher, I did forget to tell you that it should be a gigabit switcher. You will need to get one of these cables for every computer on your network plus one more. So if you have four computers, you want to get five cables. One cable feeds into your modem that goes from your modem to your switcher, and then you got the other cables going from your switcher to every computer on your network. Okay, so if you don't if you don't have multiple computers, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to buy anything. But uh, there you go. So what's the next thing to do? Well, let's see. Oh, here, this is important. When you are working on your projects, you have to make sure that when you load an object, you, when you load an image, when you load any kind of asset, you do it through the network. 